Hi, my name is Zai, and this is me playing Quake Live on the Zowie GSR mousepad. The right mouse is very important, but so is the right pad. When choosing one, there are five main things to look at. Size, design, durability, tracking, and the speed of it. It's important to get the right size, because too small, and you'll be forced to use high sensitivity. Too large, and it may not fit on your desk, and it could buckle. The Zowie GSR comes in one size, large, about 46.5cm by 39 and it is 3mm thick. Unlike other companies, Zowie have a simplistic approach that really works. You can see evidence of this philosophy in how they've put their logo on the pad. Instead of using large raised letters and symbols, they have one small tag on the side, and you can rotate the pad to make sure your mouse avoids it easily. This is not only practical, but it also works in a design sense too. With RGB keyboards and mice becoming more common, it's better to keep everything black. That way you can use the light to define your setup. There's also the matter of materials used, because certain pads can have issues with various sensors. I've tested this with multiple mice with many different sensors, and so far all have tracked very well. Here's how the Zowie ZA13 looks in game at 1600 dpi. First I'm just going to move it pixel by pixel. Then speeding up a bit. And now just a quick test to see if it'll spin out. And of course it won't. It's a very good performance all around. In the line test, I compared it with one of my favourite pads, being the Rocket Taito. And I used a SteelSeries Sensei laser mouse, along with the Zowie ZA13 optical. The blue lines are the Sensei on the Rocket Taito, and the orange lines are the ZA13 on the Rocket Taito. The light blue lines are the Sensei on the GSR, and the red lines are the ZA13 on the GSR. We see the usual jitter of the laser mouse on both pads, but the optical tracks exactly as you'd expect, so anyone using this pad with an optical sensor should get good results. For durability, this has stitched edges, which prevents the top layer from lifting over time. Some have complained that stitched edges can irritate their arms, but these feel soft and smooth, very high quality. I wouldn't expect any irritation from these. You also don't want a pad to slide around. On the base, it's a grippy, rubberized material, and while it holds fairly well while I'm pushing on it, it did move a little while I was playing, only once or twice though, so this might be one area that they could improve a little bit. A textured rubber base seems to be the best. Back on top, here's a close up of the weave direction. This is a speed pad, so it has very little friction. It's hard to quantify exactly what it feels like, but I felt most comfortable playing at 0.9 sensitivity, which is the same as the Rocket Taito, one of my favorites. However, there is a difference in feel. While they seem to be the same speed, there is more resistance on the GSR, the way I'm testing this is just moving the mouse side to side quickly. What I think this affects most is how quickly you can stop. You might overshoot on the Taito, but you won't on the GSR. So I think this is what people mean by stopping speed. The movement speed seems to be the same, but the stopping speed is faster on the GSR. And that might give the illusion that you need a higher sensitivity to use it. But from my experience, I don't think you do. I think it just takes some time to get used to it. You might be able to hear the difference, so here's a listen to both pads. To me, the Taito actually sounds a bit scratchy, a fair bit louder than the GSR, and personally I prefer quieter pads. In conclusion, while I would personally like an extended version of this to cover my desk, for people who want a large mouse pad, plain black with stitched edges, no raised logos, and a decent amount of control on a speed pad, this is one of the best options. This style of pad is becoming more and more common, so your choice will have to be based on size, speed, availability, and cost. If what I've said in this review sounds like what you want, then I highly recommend getting one. It's a great pad, one I'd be happy to use during competitive play. I'll do comparison reviews in the future to help you understand which pad is right for you, so subscribe and stay tuned for that. Hope that helps, if you want to purchase one of these, I'll leave links in the description to M-Wave in Australia and for Amazon. Also check the description for more information. Special thanks to Zowie for sending this out for a review, and as always, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.